In this lesson, we're going to have a look at a type of technical drawing called an isometric. Like other kinds of pictorial drawings, isometrics show us three sides of the object in one view, giving the drawing a 3D effect. Isometrics have some nice advantages. Unlike some other pictorials, the width and depth lines of the object are drawn at 30 degree angles from horizontal. This gives us a better 3D illusion than we see in an oblique pictorial, and because width lines and depth lines are all drawn at exactly 30 degree angles, the surfaces of the part are not distorted very much, and we get a 3D image that is more proportional than a perspective drawing. Because isometrics give us a realistic looking 3D view of the object, they are most commonly used as concept drawings, or to show the reader the general idea of what the part or object looks like. But because the edges of an isometric are drawn without perspective distortion, they're also sometimes used as working drawings in situations where all of the features of a part can be accurately dimensioned on just one view without becoming too complicated to read. Isometrics are also commonly used to show how the parts of a product go together in assembly drawings and exploded view drawings. Let's break down a simple isometric. All objects have three dimensions, width, height, and depth. In this example, width lines will be represented in green, height lines will be represented in red, and depth lines will be represented in blue. To make things easier, the shape is constructed on an isometric grid. Isogrid gives us the three angles that we use for isometric drawings, including vertical lines for our height lines, 30 degree lines traveling to the left for our width lines, and 30 degree lines traveling to the right for our depth lines. As long as our part has rectangular surfaces, we will always be following one of these three lines. If we assign a scale to our isometric grid, we can easily draw dimensioned objects with exact proportions in isometric. For this exercise, I'll use a scale of one grid space equal to one quarter of an inch. The bottom corner of the object closest to you is usually a good place to start. I'll place this point on my isometric grid in a spot where all three lines intersect. Then choose which edge to draw first. From this point I could draw a height line, a width line, or a depth line, but I'm going to draw my depth line first. My depth dimension is one inch, so using my scale I will need to count out four grid spaces in the depth direction to equal one inch, then draw my depth line. From the same corner where I started, I can also draw a width line going at 30 degrees in the opposite direction. My dimension tells me that this line is one and a half inches long, so I will need to count out six grid spaces for this line. Now I have three points on my drawing, my starting point and the end points of my two lines. As I study my shape, I can see that the only direction I have left to draw right now is vertically, in the height direction. So at each of these three points, I can draw a height line equal to one half of an inch long, or two spaces on my grid. Now that all of my height lines are drawn, I need to find new lines to draw in the width and depth directions again. I can start by connecting the ends of the height lines. This completes the front and right side surfaces of my object. The only thing left to do is to draw the edges of the object that will complete my top surface. I still need one width line and one depth line. And just like that, my isometric drawing is complete. A simple box like this one is a good place to start, but it's also a great strategy to use later to help you draw more complex shapes. If you can draw a box that has the same overall dimensions as the part you aim to draw, you can construct the more complex part inside the box. Then erase the parts of the box you didn't use at the end. We'll try that strategy in our next example. This new example introduces two new challenges. Obviously the part has more details than the simple box we constructed last. But also, not all of the edges of this object are going to follow the isometric grid lines. Most of the edges of the part will either fall on a vertical or a 30 degree line, 
but the angled edges on the back won't. It's important to notice this at the start, so we can work on the other edges first and save those lines for last. Just like last time, I have a starting point placed on my isometric grid, and just like last time, I'll be using a scale of one space to one quarter of an inch. But unlike last time, I'm not going to color code my width, depth, and height lines. To help with the extra details of this part, I'm first going to draw a simple box with the same overall dimensions as my object. This part is one inch wide, one inch deep, and three fourths of an inch high. When you use this technique on paper, you would use light construction lines so they're easy to erase later. I'm going to use the same colors used in the last example, just to help me construct the shape. I need to pick a corner of my boundary box that also contains a corner of my part. So I'm going to start in the bottom left corner and work my way to the right until the bottom platform of the part is constructed. The key to doing this correctly is to constantly check the dimensions of your part and carefully count the spaces on your isometric grid to be sure you draw your lines the right distance in the right direction every time. With the base complete, I'm ready to draw the tall part of the shape. Again, I'm going to wait to draw the sloped surface until last since those lines are not going to follow my ISO grid. Now the only lines left on my drawing are the edges of the angled surface. The isometric grid lines won't be much help since these lines need to be drawn at a different angle. Because we drew all of our other edges first, we can actually just use a straight edge to connect the two endpoints of the angled lines that we already found and draw straight lines connecting them. And just like that, our isometric drawing is done. Now we can erase the edges of the boundary box that we didn't use in our drawing. A great way to enhance the 3D illusion of your isometric drawing is to add tonal shading. Tonal shading shows some of the surfaces of the object darker than others to give the illusion of light and shadow like we see in real objects. To do this, you first need to establish a light source. In this example, the light is coming from the upper right corner of the page behind the object. The top facing surfaces are more directly facing the light source, so they are shaded the lightest. The front facing surfaces are the furthest from the light source, so they are shaded the darkest. And the right facing surfaces are in between, so they're shaded to a medium darkness. It's important to remember not to shade your drawings too dark, as this can cause your object edges to get lost in the shading and make your drawing harder to read. Thanks for watching this lesson. And if you're looking for more info on drawing isometrics, check out my other videos, Isometric Drawing Basics, that also goes over drawing isometrics without an isometric grid, and drawing curved isometrics that will show you different ways to handle holes, fillets, arcs, and other curved part features. Good luck!